Welcome to Home Gym History, produced by Garage Gym Radio. My name is Rob, and I love vintage weights. I'm joined here by Jake and Adam from Garage Gym Experiment Podcast. So Jake and Adam, they're experts of the modern age. They're experts of the modern home gym. And what I'm going to do on this podcast is teach them a little history lesson, just give them a little snippet of where some of the items in home gyms today might have come from, and then hopefully they can make some modern connections and bring a little purpose to the things that we like to lift. So Jake, Adam, welcome. Thank you. Pumped to learn. Yeah, I was excited for this one. Thanks for having us, Rob. Absolutely. So to start out with this first episode, we're going to focus on one of the most influential companies in weightlifting history, and that's York Barbell Company. And in my opinion, York Milled Era Olympic weight plates are one of the best quality and easily accessible vintage weights on the used market. So let's get into their history and try to figure out how to identify them. So what do you guys know about York Barbell and milled plates? Anything? I just know that they're well known for being the one of the highest rated vintage plates. Yeah, I see them around a lot, but I I don't know much about them. Yeah, you uh tripped over some in a field pretty recently, Adam. If you follow Adam on yeah, Instagram, in a football field. <laughs> you'll know what I'm talking about. So York plates are the classic four spoke 45s and the milled era means that on the back they were milled for accuracy. Do you know what milled means or laid any term like that? Machined? No, but I, I know it's a, a there's a little bit of a groove. There you go. But, yeah, when you say machined, I'm aware. Yeah. yeah. You guys are on the right track. So machined is the generic term. That covers lathing and milling. Lathed means that there's a circular pattern. You'll see those on cap weight plates even up till I don't know, about 10 years ago. Whereas milled is more of a uh, artisan, if you will, effort and more prized than lathed. What would happen is at York Barbell Company, a flat surface that was a scale, the weight would be put onto it, and then the milling machine would be operated by hand. There was a person who stood there and plate by plate, one at a time, would mill it until it was within tolerance. So when you lift up a milled York weight plate, that was made by hand by someone in the York factory, in the York foundry, which I think is kind of cool. So moving forward, how do you identify these things? Well. There's a legacy line of milled plates, and you can buy those right now, 2022, from York Barbell. I believe Rogue also sells them. There is a big difference, though, and that big difference is that those are made in China. Whereas I just mentioned the York milled era plates, which are from 1960 through about the 1990s, those were made in the United States. So the quality, some would beg, is a little different, and the legacy of being made in the USA is definitely different. So when it comes to identifying them, one of the biggest things would be a trademark symbol. So on the legacy line, one of the biggest identifying marks would be a trademark symbol. If there's a trademark symbol by the York barbell name, then that's a newer legacy plate. Don't pay top dollar for it on the used market. That's not vintage. Lettering around the hub that says York barbell on the plates is also a key indicator that it's a legacy plate. There's some big aesthetic differences too. So when it comes to pre-USA plates, meaning that prior to stamping these with USA on the center hub, they looked a little different. And these are the ones from the 1960s up until the 1990s, the oldest of the milled era. The 35s had a nice tall letter. Uh, It's a little dark here. I might need to get an image. But the 35s had a nice tall letter with the milling on the back. And... The 25s, some people nickname a hockey puck. The 25s just have a circle around them, resembling a flat hockey puck. And you'll notice that the 25s don't have any type of lettering of York Barbell. Whereas the legacy 25s say York Barbell on them. The 45s, 35s and 25s are all milled commonly, but the milling wasn't for aesthetic purposes like it is for the legacy line. Back with the pre-USA and even the USA stamped ones, which I'll explain in just a second, the milling was for tolerance. So it's more of an aesthetic thing nowadays. Back then, it was just to get that weight accurate. Moving down from 25, all of the change plates similarly to the 25s didn't have any York Barbell branding. 
with the pre-USA stamp. Now, I keep saying that, the pre-USA stamp. What I'm talking about is that in the 1990s, when your barbell shifted production overseas, their premium Olympic plate line made here in the United States, they wanted to delineate, you know, for a price point as well. And on the center hub, they would have USA stamped on it, which I'll try to show to you there. So a big difference was that the center hub had USA. And then the other big difference would be that the 35s, instead of having the tall letters, were a miniature version of the four spoke 45s. Those are still considered milled era plates and they're still collectible, but there is a little difference there in the 1990s with the USA stamp. With the smaller change plates, sometimes they would be milled for accuracy. And now in the vintage weights game, they're quite collectible if they're milled. Because like any other collectible in life, if there's less of it, then it's rare and people want it. Realistically, back in the 1960s through the 1980s, they were just milling this five pound plate because it didn't weigh five pounds. So we've got pre-USA, all the way up through the USA stamp being vintage Yorks. And then we've got the legacy line, which are made in China. Nothing against those, if you wanna go buy those, but I wanted to ask the two of you, what do you think would be a good example of a USA made plate that had some type of machining for accuracy? What companies come to mind? Drink <clears throat> there you go. The go-to plates as your Rogue. <laughs> t-shirt would imply. Rogue. Rogue, there you go. Adam's got on a Massonomics t-shirt, and then yeah, Rogue. Rogue has several different USA plates, but we'll stick with the thinner ones, the modern looking plates. So when it comes to those, Adam, do you have one of those handy? Strength Co? Yeah, I've got a 45 Perfect. right here. So take a look at that 45. First, aesthetically, you know, you've got yours upside down, but that's okay. For the people listening and not watching, you know, Jake, you can compare. What do you see with Strength Co compared to York? We'll play the little highlight magazine game. What's different? What's similar? The York one, they look pretty similar um, with the with the cross through the dish, but the York one has the word Olympic and barbell on there. There you go. And standard. Absolutely. So in a future episode. It's just the wording. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to the wording. But you hit the nail on the head that you got to do a little more research and figure it out. Maybe even email Grant, the founder and owner of Strength Co. and see if he based the design on York as like an homage to the classic four spoke weight plate. Mm. But they do remind me of York weight plates. The other reason they remind me would be the machining of them. Strength Go prides itself. If you go to their website, they say it all over the website on the quality made product that they have. And most people talk about it, how it fits snugly on the barbell. There's not much play on the barbell, how their plates are accurate as well. Like when you load them up, Adam, is that all true for you? <laughs> and you're not, uh, to my knowledge, yeah, affiliated or, you know, employed by Strength no, Co. This is just a no. guy with their plates. Yeah, I, I bought these with my money, my own money. Um, they, they fit very tightly uh, to a point, like if you have a rib sleeve, it's kind of like maneuvering <laughs> to get them on. Yeah. And I had a uh, someone that I know on Instagram posted like a York plate kind of wiggling on a bar. But anyone who has a vintage York barbell knows that the York vintage plates do fit really snug on those. It's actually modern barbells that are slightly less diameter that they don't fit well on. And that's one of the reasons that since I lift with a lot of vintage barbells, I'm a little hesitant to get strength coat plates. I'm, I'm a little fearful they'll be too snug on them, but we'll see. I mean, I'll probably get some eventually. Now, Adam, you had strength coat and Jake, you mentioned Rogue. So your Rogue plates, if my memory recalls, if you have one handy, you can hold it up. They don't have the four spoke like strength co and York. They have a little different look to them, aesthetically speaking, but similarly to strength co they're machined and they're made in the United States. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, that's the deep dish. Is that the deep dish? Deep dish. Okay. Yeah. That's the deep dish. And then do you have the thin one? So yeah, those are both the larger plates are both made at Cadillac foundry. I think they make the smaller ones elsewhere, but still in the United States. And I did some checking on their websites, Rogue and Strength Co. They're both within 2% tolerance. There we go. Oh, I stand corrected. So they do have four spokes, but theirs don't taper off, it looks like. 
and they go yeah straight they go out. all the way through yeah they go all the way through so there's a little difference there it's a nice looking plate though are they thinner than shake than typical plates you might have like barbell standard iron plates or about the same uh, they're pretty much they're pretty close to calibrated okay. plates so they are thin yeah they're much thinner so that would be something that you know someone yeah. looking to buy some plates might want to keep in mind is if you're looking for a, a slightly thinner plate than the rogue ones are made in usa and machined now comparing these in terms of cost that's where things get a little tricky because as i said at the start in the opening of this in my opinion milled yorks are like the <laughs> they're the gateway they're the entryway to vintage weights for so many people <laughs> to include myself the very first vintage weights I ever got were milled Yorks. And as I said on the Garage Gym Experiment podcast, when I was on there with you guys, the reason I got them wasn't that I was chasing vintage weights. It's because I did some Googling and I found out that I could save a little money and get accurate plates that were old, rusty York plates and clean them up. So is that still true right now, years later? Vintage York plates, not the legacy, the vintage ones that are made in the United States, from the milled era usually go between a dollar to two dollar a pound usually and you know occasionally i'll see them a little pricier occasionally i'll see them cheaper and condition tends to play a part i feel like the go-to price for it is two dollars a pound that's what i see a lot of people that aren't even sure what they have they just know that york is something end up pricing them so for a 255 pound set like the one that would come with a 45 pound barbell that comes out to anywhere between $255 to, on the high end, $510. So what I did was I went to Rogue's website and I priced out the same weight increments. So a pair of 45s, 35s, 25s, and 10s, four fives, and then a pair of 2.5s. And I did the same thing on Strength Co's site. And I want to mention that Rogue and Strength Co both have different plate configurations. I mean, you can buy whatever, but for the sake of comparing, I priced it out. So compared to the upper end price of vintage Yorks at 510, and that doesn't include shipping or tax, in most cases buying on the used market, Rogue USA Olympic plates will run $779 plus shipping and tax, and Strength Co. will run an even $700 plus shipping and tax. So you're looking at anywhere from about a $200 to $300 markup to buy them new. And to put that into you know, a percentage, you're looking at about a 30% increase on price to buy them new versus hunting on the used market and buying vintage Yorks. I'm not saying not to buy them new, but if you're looking to save a couple dollars, maybe try out some vintage Yorks. Or if you just want to add on, maybe you've got a nice set of weights, but you're lifting heavier and you need a couple more 45s. You could do worse than vintage York. That's for sure. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I'm, I'm curious um, with York Barbell, you, you, you mentioned 1960s was kind of when they got rolling. Who was their primary competition? Well, Let's okay. go with the first one is who was their primary competition at that time? Well, Weeder for sure in the 1960s. But just to be clear, York Barbell uh, began much before that. So <clears throat> the quick history on York Barbell is that they were actually an oil burner factory that Bob Hoffman, the founder of York Barbell, owned. And he was into weightlifting. He saw the Olympic Games way back in the 1920s. And he noticed that his factory workers were strong in the oil burner factory. So then after the 1932 Olympics, Bob Hoffman bought Milo Barbell. Milo Barbell was founded by Alan Calvert, who's widely regarded as one of the first men to invent the barbell. And when Bob Hoffman then bought it, in 1932, that was the founding of York Barbell. So fast forward through, you know, some standard plates, deep dish plates, when we get all the way up to modern plates, as we would call them, the ones that are about the thickness of the plates we've been talking about, that's in the 1960s. And their main competitor would probably be Weeder. Joe Weeder from Canada, he went out west. He was highly influential in bodybuilding. And I could do a whole episode with you guys about Bob Hoffman versus Joe, <laughs> Bob versus Joe episode. Uh -huh. but the short of it is Bob Hoffman was like Mr. Go USA Patriot strength and strong. Who cares what you look like? Whereas Joe Weider was like, we're going to be strong, but you're going to look great. Here's my friend, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Take a look at him. So what was your second one? Cool. And then, and then the second one was 
new types of plates, who were the first types of people that bought them? Oh, you're talking about like the modern plates from Deep Dish? Oh, okay. Yeah, who, Power who is this for sure? So the same way you're just talking about how the Rogue plates are slightly thinner, more towards like a, a competition disc. Well, the whole purpose uh -huh. of that is to fit more on the bar. So in a future episode that we'll have here that I'm planning out and kind of researching, I'm going to go more in depth with this, but the short of it is that when powerlifting came about, they were doing the main three lifts, you know, squat, bench, deadlift. They weren't doing the clean, the snatch, like the Olympic weightlifters. So you didn't have that explosive movement. You were just having power movements. So they started putting more and more weight on the barbell and those deep dish were just too thick. So that's the short and the sweet of the transition. Got it. Hm. Interesting. And then take that a step further. You've what got about, the competition discs that are super thin. What about the increments that we see today? 45s, 35s, 25s, 10s, 5s, 2 and a half, same increments, or were there any differences? Oh, absolutely. So with York specifically or just in general? With York specifically. With, and, and and then I guess in general well, afterwards. Well, had a bunch of oddities and kind of things going on because, you know, they're trying to make money. It's, it's a company. <laughs> so as far as increments, you know, <laughs> the pounds and the kilograms, the United States basically versus the world. York eventually bowed to some of that. And there is a kilogram based line of milled era plates. They're pretty rare, hard to come by. I don't have any of them. In addition to that, there was a 55 pound and a hundred pound plate that was put out like Donnie Thompson, famous power lifter. I follow him on Instagram. He has some gold hundred pound Yorks that he frequently puts on the bar. Even now, very impressive, not just the plates, but also the fact that it lifts them. So shout out to Donnie. But as far as other increments, you know, it got a little tricky. They would take standard plates and bore them out by special order. I have some 75s that were standard plates that then were bored out by the company. So those are kind of cool. And then you got into some specially lined stuff. Like mm. Disney had a line of York plates. Uh, some colleges had lines of York plates. So if you see a milled like University of Hawaii or Middle Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Naval Academy, the Naval Academy Yorks are pretty cool. They say beat army on them. So they were used in the, in the gym. So back, that's awesome. You know, when the custom line came about, some of my favorite are the blue ones York would take and they put out a metallic blue line of plates and dumbbells that were sold in big box stores. And they have just kind of this retro metallic blue color to them. They're the same plates, same dumbbells. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, maybe it's just the adhesive that was used. Very frequently, these are found with the original like champion sports sticker price tag on them, you know, 30 years later, since 1990s. So there are some varieties out there besides what was just originally shown. And those are collectible and, you know, they weigh something. They're definitely able to be lifted. Well, Jake, Adam, thanks for coming out. I appreciate you being here on Home Gym History. Look forward to chatting with you again. My name is Rob once again, and I can be found on Instagram at Vintage Weights PGH, as well as on my YouTube channel, which is Vintage Weights PGH. This podcast is viewable on YouTube on the Garage Gym Radio YouTube channel. And then it is available on all major podcast platforms under home gym history. Do us a favor, like it, subscribe to it, drop a comment, throw some stars and review us. And please keep on lifting those weights, whether they're old, new, or a mix of the two.